Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to just chat a little bit about powerful CPUs, like super OP CPUs and whether or not they're worth it. In my use case, yeah, I, I love powerful CPUs, but you know, let's start from the beginning. CPUs. Now CPUs, they're interesting because I'm generally thinking more about GPUs more often than I am CPUs. CPUs I generally just buy to match my GPU and I very rarely r care too much about it but that's mostly just because I've <clears throat> rarely been doing a bunch of productivity work and I also am not generally in the esports sphere. However there are times where I play games that are very CPU bound and in those games I do want to get the full range of my system if possible. And so you want to minimize that CPU boundary when you have a powerful system. So there is a place for powerful CPUs in powerful systems. However, there's also this. We're gonna go through a few things, talk about the CPUs, uh, whether or not you need a powerful CPU, even in a powerful system. This will be an interesting topic to cover, but also those occasions in which powerful CPUs are most worthwhile. Let's start. Are powerful CPUs even necessary? Well, in some occasions I would really say they are because like in eSports, I would say that they are very necessary just because you're trying to reach like the highest of the high frame rates. And in those situations, you're gonna need very good CPUs because your GPU in these games are very rarely gonna be the limiting factor. They're gonna be turning settings down. The games are generally less graphically demanding to begin with because that's not even the main focus of the games. So again, you're gonna wanna be turning those settings down. And so you're gonna have all this headroom for your GPU. So you wanna fill out that space with a powerful CPU. And in that case, you're definitely gonna wanna push for CPU power. And then there's also like CPU intensive games. There's a lot of games like real-time strategy, I believe. There's there's um this one game that's used for CPU tests all the time. I, I'm blanking on its name right now, but there's a lot of these games that will really push CPU usage just due to the sheer amount of activities happening all at once that need to be calculated on the computer. And so in those type of titles, you're really going to want to have a powerful CPU in a, and again, a powerful system. If you have a weaker CPU, it's not that you're going to be unable to play these games or it's not going to be an enjoyable experience, more that you're just going to have a suboptimal experience potentially. And then there's also those games that have been coming out that are just severely unoptimized for CPUs. This would be games like Stalker, where even on my 9800X3D, I was struggling to hit 60 at all times. And that was bonkers. I mean, I'm not sure if I have my CPU settings dialed in perfectly. And, and this was a while ago when I just upgraded to the 9800X3D and I was trying to tinker with stuff. I'm gonna need to go back and, and check that again. But I really, I don't really have too much interest in Stalker 2. I did originally because I thought it would be a game I would really enjoy, but I don't know. It's visually unappealing. Its performance is poo. And it's, I don't know, it's just, and its gameplay is, it's okay. It was fun what I played. There was just a mix of things like the voice acting and all that being bad as well that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. But yeah, apart from that, so that would be eSports, matching a powerful system if that's something that you care about terribly much, and CPU intensive games. Apart from that, you don't really need one. But let's, let's say if you are trying to target 60 FPS on every game, on, on practically every game, and you don't care whether or not you end up being CPU bottlenecked. You just want to be able to play both Cyberpunk maxed out 60 FPS and also play older games at 60 FPS maxed out. You're not going to need the best of the best CPU. And while, you know, ray tracing is a technology that does harm the CPU performance, and so in those cases, you might need a better CPU. But apart from that, most graphically intensive settings will be rather unaffected by what CPU you have, unless you have a graphics card that has a bunch of CPU overhead, but then you get into other issues. Um, NVIDIA has a little bit worse overhead than AMD. I actually think it's somewhat significant, but I know Intel had a huge problem with that with their B series lineup, their Battle Mage cards but they have seemingly, oh fricks, I realize that I haven't been playing this. 
Well, I hope that's not too much of a problem for you guys. But yeah, there, there's the problem with overhead. The real thing, though, is if you are able to hit 60 in every game, but in older games or games that are less graphically demanding, you start hitting a CPU uh, bottleneck, you still don't need the best of the best, even if you have a 5090. Um, for a while there, I, I built a, a few PCs for different people with 5600Xs in them. And the 5600X is a super, super solid CPU. It's able to handle pretty much everything perfectly. Uh, I don't think it wouldn't be able to do stalker max settings. I mean, stalker, stalker was silly. Stalker was super silly because I wasn't able in that main town that you first get to, to um, at max settings, play with my 5080 without CPU bottlenecking. It was insane. So honestly, like, there are those games, those outlier games, where you're not going to be hitting 60 on almost anything. And at that point, it's it's whatever. But honestly, if your goal is 60 FPS and practically everything, you do not need to go for the best of the best. You probably just need, like, most a 7500F or a 7600X for pretty much everything out there right now. If you want to play 60 on everything, that's what you want to go for. This is a similar strategy, uh, actually a very, like, practically the same strategy that consoles take to save cost. Because generally they're targeting TVs that run at 60. I mean, they have had that push for 120 hertz. But generally they're targeting this type of system and they're just trying to push graphics higher and higher. And so they'll have a little bit off balance systems where I think the PS5 and PS5 Pro still both have CPUs that roughly match a AMD 3600X. When we're talking PC gaming, of course, it's not going to be as um, personalized to each PC configuration, so you're going to have issues that arise. But generally, 5600X, you know, you can do a 5700X. There's also the people who do, uh, you can do a 7500F. 7500Fs, great for getting into the AM5 platform. It's what my brother used. It's what he's currently using, and it works wonderfully. It's it's pretty much the same power of a 7600 and a 7600 is roughly the same power as a 7600X. And so that's pretty much all you need. And its power draw is amazing. It's, I think, a 75-watt CPU, 70-watt CPU. And it, it works very, very well. It's very powerful for what it is. Now, there are some people out there. I remember there was this big deal with Battlefield 6 needing more than or needing eight cores. And it was very core reliant. I haven't looked much into this. I believe Daniel Owen has a video on that. If that's something that interests you, I think I will link that in the description for people who want it. Pretty sure it was Daniel Owen who had a video on that. Um, you know what? I'm going to look that up right now. Yeah, right here you have Daniel Owen's video on how many CPU cores you actually need in order to play Battlefield 6. Um, if that really interests you, if that's a game that's a sticking point for you, I do remember this being something that was brought up. I'm not sure if you're not going to be reaching 60. I'm pretty sure you'll be reaching 60 if you have a 6-core 7600X. I doubt that that will change that, but there might be issues like stuttering and other things that may arise. Um, I'm not sure. I've not looked too much into that as I do not actually own Battlefield 6. If that interests you, it's there. there's that. I, I love Daniel Owen. If you couldn't tell, I love Daniel Owen, so... Um, I owe him my life. But yeah, back to the topic. 5600X will work for almost everybody if you're going for just 60 FPS minimum on everything. And it's, it's also still overkill for a lot of things. But again, you'll have those games that are outliers or, you know, a lot of modern games may sometimes struggle with higher settings due to ray tracing. Ray tracing does use the CPU somewhat. So that is a consideration you're going to need to keep in mind. However, it is also very important to know there definitely is a place for high performance CPUs, not only for like um, workstation loads, you know, if you're if you're trying to do a ton of rendering, editing, rendering, a bunch of, you know, heavy CPU tasks, heavy GPU tasks, you need a huge workstation, then you're going to want a powerful CPU. And that's just how it is. But that doesn't mean you necessarily need one for gaming. But if you're building a top of the line system, and you're trying to max out what you have to make sure you're using the full extent of your GPU in every game you could play, you're going to want to make sure you're still checking that bottleneck. Some people are okay with bottlenecks on the CPU as long as they're able to hit 60 FPS with good graphics and everything. For me personally, I want my bottleneck to be on the GPU at all times. 
practically. I want my, my GPU to be the limiting feature, and I hardly want to even think about my CPU because the CPU, I don't know, something about it, it just, it, it's harder to tune settings down to allow for higher frame rates when you're CPU limited. There's, there's a smaller percentage of settings that are going to be able to be adjusted for that. And so that's why it's just so much nicer to know that you have all this headroom, you know what I mean? So that if you are hitting frames that you don't really like all that much, you can just turn some settings down and be okay. And that's my opinion. That's the way I like it. So I, I do run a system with a 5080 and a 9800X3D. And I don't think I'd have it any other way. I mean, a 7800X3D would be practically the same, but you know, having a 9800X3D is solid, <laughs> very, very solid. And I think it's probably one of the most satisfying things I have in my system. I actually bought it used, I think for 400 bucks. Um, I bought it from Facebook Marketplace from this guy and it works very, very well. And I love having it. I don't think I would have it any other way, honestly. I don't regret my purchase at all. With the 5080, I had some, yeah, some, I have some uh, with my 5080, of course, but the 9800X3D, I love that. I love that CPU. It is freaking beastly. And I got it for a decent price, in my opinion. For what it is, 400 bucks is, it feels like nothing. But maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Let me know. I'm probably crazy. But yeah, that's, that's basically it. Just making sure that, you know, you find where you are. Right? In, in my opinion, I want to make sure that my CPU is above the GPU I have. That's generally what I want to go to. If it was like a PC that I plan to put on a TV or something like that, where it's like a, a console-like experience, I think I would be okay having a CPU that's a little weaker than the GPU. So in those titles, it would just kind of, you know, hit that refresh rate that I need. And then I can just turn graphic settings up to where it starts to hit a point where I can't turn them up anymore. And, and break that. Uh, and that's how some things work. When I had my 7600X still, I, I used the 7600X in this PC with the 4070 Ti, and then I upgraded my 58 uh, to the 5080. And during that period of time, I had to do a lot of that because I was very, I was CPU bottlenecked in almost everything, everything I was CPU bottlenecked. So that's really why I upgraded to the 9800X3D. But but at that time, I was doing a lot of that where I would just keep upping settings until I couldn't anymore. But the card being what it is, there was a lot of games where I was always CPU bottlenecked because it couldn't go any higher without turning the resolution up and I'm playing at 1440p. Although that's going to change soon. I'm going to keep saying that. That's going to change soon. I am going to change to 4K. I'm, I'm pretty much pretty much sold at this point. I'll have another video talking about the uh, pain points from switching away from 1440p. Uh, I've had many, and it's been a long road truly coming to a point where I'm okay switching to 4K, even with a 5080, just because I love the big number game. You know, just, oh, there's so many frames. And I only have a 144 hertz screen, so it's like, oh, so many number, so much number, and I can't even see it. So there's that. I don't know what's wrong with me. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I'm not sure after editing if this one's going to be very long, but, you know, I, I appreciate you guys watching, tuning in. Uh, I love, you know, all the engagement we've been seeing, and I want to keep pushing it forward. Let me know your opinions on CPUs, um, what CPUs you have in your system. Do you prefer to be CPU or, or GPU bottlenecked? I think most people would prefer to be GPU bottlenecked. Uh, unless they're in very specific situations. Um, just because, again, that ability to up and down settings with a GPU, it's much easier. It's much easier. So you're going to have more uh, more of a range for performance levels if you have a better GPU than CPU. So that that's just what I've seen. But yeah, uh, let me know. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. And I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.